It is no burden to use the pronouns that are shared with us. If your friend William asks you to call him Billy, you don't blink an eye. If your friend Elizabeth says, I go by Lily, you call her Lily and we just say okay. The only difference between these examples and those opposed by this harmful resolution is the perception that a student's gender does not fit your expectation of it. Dawn Riggs, a teacher of 33 years, was testifying against a resolution that will require Ohio schools to out trans and non-binary students to their parents, allow teachers the right to refuse to use the student's preferred name and pronouns, and require students to participate on sports teams based on their sex assigned at birth, effectively excluding trans girls from school sports. The resolution to support parents, schools, and districts in rejecting harmful, coercive, and burdensome gender identity policies was introduced by board member Brendan Shea as a reaction to new federal Title IX rules that expand protections for LGBTQ students. More on this later. But that was back in September of 2022. Just one example from one state. Let's go from Ohio to Utah, where activist and legislative researcher Aaron Reed also points out that SB 16 was being proposed. It's a bill that would ban gender affirming care for trans youth. During the debate of this bill, one Democratic Utah Senator, Luz Escamilla, proposed an amendment to call Republicans bluff that they care about protecting kids. Senator Escamilla stated, if we are going to take away the ability for parents to make decisions with their providers, then all children should be included and not targeted at a specific group of kids. And this is how Senator Michael Kennedy responded. Yeah, we've heard some testimony to that reflection. I, I don't understand why a surgeon would, when somebody's in the middle of developing, put in as some sort of implant. I, I, I find that to be uh, a surprising version of medical care, but I think if that has been done, it's likely to have been done for decades and decades and decades in this state. As to mastectomies or taking off normal body parts, uh, that has been done for no more than 10 years in this state, although maybe there have been uh, minors that have received these procedures. So that's one distinction. The proponent and chief sponsor of the anti-trans bill said that he opposed banning breast implants for cisgender kids because, well, to be fair, he says even though he doesn't agree with it and doesn't know if it's happening, it shouldn't because teenage bodies aren't fully developed. But then, eh, it's been going on for decades and decades and decades. Meanwhile, to him, mastectomies and taking off, quote, normal body parts has only been around for 10 years. The point is, stupid reasoning is being used to justify anti-trans legislation. The calling your bluff amendment, as I'm calling it, Failed five to two, by the way, with all five Republicans voting against it and both Democrats voting for it. SB 16 was eventually passed, though, out of committee and will be heard on the full Senate floor. Oh, and as I mentioned earlier, the Ohio Board of Education passed a resolution to oppose protections for queer students. I get the feeling that Republican politicians and pundits have no idea of just how many teenagers get, say, nose jobs, in addition to breast reductions and breast implants. Maybe they just don't care. With that said... How else will the Matt Walshes of the world know when girls and young women are fertile? The most fertile. Speaking of, Matt Walsh will say that you can't ask others to use your preferred pronouns like it's something you own. You don't own pronouns. You know, before telling people to call him Matt, not Matthew, a name that was assigned to him and he doesn't own, could change to what he prefers. And if Ben Shapiro denies using preferred pronouns and calling people by the name they choose, the easiest and most basic form of gender affirming care because we have a language to uphold and maintain. Minutes after telling someone to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, which didn't always mean what it currently means, but cool. Which also meant other things prior to what it also means now. Candace Owens said she wouldn't let her kids play with a little boy who wore girls clothes because I don't, it would show how boys and men dress around the world and how something as goofy as wearing pink if you're a girl versus blue if you're a boy used to be reversed and changed, like all these things I just discussed can. I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's great to see teachers and reporters and activists and senators advocate for queer communities, while some can't even do the bare minimum, like affirming someone's preferred name and pronouns or coming up with an argument that makes sense. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. To see additional content from yours truly, click on the Jeff Wiggins hashtag. You can also find me on my YouTube channel, We Gonna Be Alright. Thanks for watching.